بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد continuing on in our Ramadan series today I'd like to talk about the types of soul the three types of soul or the three states of the soul and as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should always strive to do our best we should always strive to learn understand and practice true Islamic monotheism meaning to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَلَنْتِ لِلْيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ رُسُولًا لِنْعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَجْتَنِهُ تَعْبُوهُ That every nation and messenger, uh, every nation was had messengers sent to them to worship Allah alone and stay away from those things which are worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. اِجْتَنِهُ تَعْبُوهُ So, with realizing Rahimakumullah, that this is our purpose. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and have mercy upon you. That when we realize our divine purpose, we should always be striving to analyze ourselves, look to look at our shortcomings, and realize that we all have shortcomings. As the Prophet وسلم, said, Adam that all the children of Adam they have mistakes and the best of those who are sinners are those who repent so repentance is a part of our religion and repentance is coming closer to Allah and repentance is the means for us to have our sins expiated and removed and have our scale of good deeds heavy and that requires in order to repent in order to get to that stage, we have to be looking at ourselves. We have to be looking at our mistakes. We have to be looking at ourselves always. So we're going to talk about the three types of soul and how this is relevant for us. And bidnillah, it's relevant for all of us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all to be of those who look at ourselves and who better ourselves. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. May he bless us to be of those people. Ameen. The first type of soul I'd like to speak about is a nafs al mutmainna is the tranquil self this is the type of soul or the tranquil soul ida sakanat an nafs ila allah azza wa jal wa tma'annat bi dhikrihi wa anabat ilayhi واشتقت إلى لقائه وأنست بقربه فهي مطمئنة. So this soul is a soul that is comforted and tranquil and pleased with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala the Almighty, and it is tranquil by making by remembering Allah, by making dhikr. And it is the soul that's striving to make repentance to Allah, to come back to Allah in, in humility and in, in repentance, repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the, its shortcomings and its sins. And it is wanting to return to Allah, to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's looking forward to that and to death in the sense that this will be the end of this life and entering into the hereafter for the opportunity to meet our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the soul. This soul is tranquil. Father Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma المطمئنة المصدقة ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما he said that the one who is tranquil you know who is the, the, 
the one who is 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 comfort and comforted and tranquil that this person is the one who is who is truthful waqala qatada rahimahullah ta'ala one of the tabi'in he said who will mu'minu atma'annat nafsuhu ila ma wa'ada Allah Qatada rahimahullah ta'ala described he was either one of the tabi'in or itba'a tabi'in and one of the mufassirin of the Quran I believe he was a tabi'i he said that the believer is tranquil in his soul or in, in his self or in his well-being with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised him so the believer is comforted by the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they look forward the believers look forward to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's promise and the one who possesses this soul is comforted by knowing, comforted by the divine uh, names of Allah the Almighty and His divine characteristics that He informed us about Himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that His Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, informed us about. And then he is comforted by that, by that khabar, by that that information from Allah wa Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and what he will find after death. This is the the heart of the believer, the soul of the believer, from the from the affairs of Al Barzakh, you know, the life after this life, before the day of judgment, before the hereafter, and what he will find on the day of judgment and what he will witness with his eyes and is comforted and tranquil with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qadr his, the divine destiny, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is comforted with that salam qalbu and is pleased with that, is pleased with that and is not displeased or complaining or dissatisfied in their iman with those things. Instead, the believer is tranquil and accepts the qadr and accepts the d divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and looks forward to the hereafter in that they, this is the believer that possesses the nafs al mutma'inna, the tranquil, the tranquil soul. And this soul is also happy and pleased with this, uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and realizes that every musibah, every trial or difficulty is a part of the qadr, is a part of the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah the Almighty says, مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِ قَلْبُهُ Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Taqabin He says Subhana and speaking about this soul مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ that there doesn't happen a trial or, or difficulty Except that it is with the permission of Allah. And whoever believes in Allah, then Allah will guide his heart. وَقَالَ غَيْرَ وَاحِدْ مِنَ السَّلَفِ وَقَالَ غَيْرَ وَاحِدْ مِنَ السَّلَفِ هُوَ الْعَبْدُ تُسِيبُهُ مُسِيبَةً فَيَعْلَمْ أَنَّهَا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ فَيَرْضَى وَيُسَلِّمْ 
that more than one of the Salaf, Salaf al-Saleh, Ridwan alayhi said this statement that about this verse, that it is the slave who when a trial befalls him, that he knows that it is from his Lord, and he is pleased with it, and he is comforted with that, he accepts that. That is the one who has the soul mutma'inna. The second type of soul, النفس اللوامة This is the blameworthy soul. قالة الطائفة هي التي لا تثبت على حال من و... هي التي لا تثبت على حال واحدة فهي كثرة التقلب والتلون فالتذكر وتغفر وتقبل وتعرض وتحب وتغضب وتفرح وتحزن وترضى وتغضب وتطيع وتتقي وقالت أخرى هي النفس المؤمن So some of the salaf, a group of the salaf, they said that the nafs al the blameworthy soul, it is that soul which is not firm in one state. It's not in one state. That it is it, it is always changing, quickly changing and, 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 and switching up. Sometimes it is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sometimes it's totally, uh, you know, not reflecting on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sometimes it is accepting and sometimes it contradicts. Sometimes it loves and sometimes it hates. Sometimes it is happy and sometimes it is sad. Sometimes it is pleased and sometimes it is angry. And sometimes it is obedient and fearful. You know, God fearful, having taqwa. And another group of the Salaf said about the soul, they said that it is the soul of the mu'min, of the believer. Qala Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Inna al-mu'mina la tarahu illa yulom nafsuhu, da'iman, yuqul, ما أردت بهذا ما أردت بهذا لم فعلت هذا كان هذا أولى من هذا أو نحو هذا كلام حسن البصري said رحمه الله تعالى he said that the believer you will not find him except that he blames himself Always. He says, what did I uh, want by that? Why did I do that? And it would have been better if I would have done that. And like this. Waqalat Ukhra and another group of the Salaf said, اللوم يوم القيامة فإن كل أحد يلوم نفسه إن كان مسيا على إساعته وإن كان محسنا على تقصيره Another group of the Salaf said about the blameworthy soul They said this is uh, the blame on the day of judgment So they, Hassan al-Basri said this is the soul of the believer in this life But another group of the Salaf said that it was the uh, that it was in the hereafter that it was the the, the blame in the here in, on the day of judgment and that every single person will blame himself if they were doing evil 
then they will bl be blaming and feeling sorrow about their the evil that they performed. And, it, and if they were uh, righteous, then they will be blaming and feel they will feel they will uh, uh, you know feel blameworthy and feel uh, and feel that they were not doing their best and this has to do with their taxia this has to do they will feel blameworthy because of their taxia because of their shortcomings so that right there is a beautiful beautiful statement and shows us how the Salaf were that they illustrated for us or would speak about which is as well known for us all that when a person is doing evil that of course especially if they're a Muslim then they will because of the Iman that they have they will feel some sorrow they will feel blameworthy because of the evil they do, someone who is doing open sins or or sins, even private sins, but it's but they know they're doing wrong. They know, hey, I shouldn't be eating this. I shouldn't be looking at this. I shouldn't be drinking this. I shouldn't be smoking this. Whatever. They they blame themselves for their evil. But the one who is truly righteous, who doesn't involve himself in the major sins, then this person will blame themselves. For their shortcomings, meaning that they didn't reach the level of iman they would have liked to, and they fear Allah so much, and they know that they have taqsir because we all have taqsir, we all have sins, we all have shortcomings, but they will blame themselves for their taqsir, whereas the other one blame, blames himself for their major sins because they're involved in major sins. So it's not just taqsir, but they're just have have big issues they're dealing with and and blameworthy. They're blameworthy for that. But the righteous one, the muhsin, the one who stays away from the major sins and is doing the mustahabat, doing the, the recommended deeds, the, the extra ibadah, that this person is blaming themselves for their shortcomings. Yuqul Imam Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, wa hadha kulluhu haq. Ibn al-Qayyim said all of those statements are the truth about the, uh, the blameworthy soul. All of those statements about the salaf. And then this blameworthiness is of two types. And there is the lawama, the blameworthy one, which is uh, blameworthy, or the one which is greater blameworthy. The one that's maluma, it is the nafs. That is a jahila, a zalima. Alati yalomaha Allah Azza wa Jal wal malaika. So the first type is the one, the one that is, it is blameworthy. And that it is the soul which is ignorant and oppressive. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, blames it, considers it blameworthy, and the malaika as well. Then there's the other one which is not uh, blameworthy. وَهِيَ أَلَّتِي لَا تَزَلْ تُلُومْ صَاحِبَهَا عَلَى تَقْسِيرِهِ فِي طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ مَعَ بَدَلِهِ جُهْدِهِ فَهَذِهِ غَيْرَ مَعْلُومَ So then the other one which is not blameworthy as a soul but fits in this category it is the one which continues to blame itself re relating to its its uh, shortcomings in being obedient to Allah and its shortcomings with regards to striving then this one is not really blameworthy in that sense you know it is not the sinful blameworthy this one is on a higher level of Iman because they're blaming themselves for not making tahajid, for example, and doing the extra deeds, the extra. But they're doing the wajib, and they're staying away from the muharramat. Whereas the other one was blameworthy because they're ignorant, and they're doing 
sinfulness. They're rightfully blameworthy because they're doing uh, disobedience to Allah and the angels are witnessing it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala witness it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blames them for their sinfulness. But the second one is on another level of Iman. They are obedient to Allah and they strive to please Allah. And they stay away from the major sins. But yet they blame themselves for their shortcomings as we mentioned about the Muslim before. The third type of soul, النفس الإمارة بسوء This is the soul that is ruled and dictated by evil. وَهَذِهِ هِيَ النَّفْسِ الْمَذْمُومَ This soul is, is, is sinful. فَإِنَّهَا تَأْمُرْ بِكُلِّ سُوء Because it orders to every kind of evil. وَهَذَا مِنْ تَبِيَتِهَا And this is its natural state, that it is inclined towards evil. فَمَا تُخَلِّسْ أَحَدْ مِنْ شَرِّهَا إِلَّا بِتَوْفِيكِ اللَّهِ And then no one escapes the evil of this soul except with the tawfiq min Allah, except if Allah favors it to be uh, to get rid of that evil characteristic, the one who's always inclined to evil. كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى حَكِيًا عَنْ إِمْرَأَةِ الْعَزِيزِ وَمَا أَبْرِئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ نَفْسَ الْإِمَارَةِ لِنَفْسَ الْإِمَارَةِ بِسُوء إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي إِنَّ رَبِّي غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Imrat al-Aziz that she said uh, in, in the ayat and I free not myself from blame verily the human self is inclined to evil except when my Lord bestows his mercy upon whom he wills. Verily my Lord is oft forgiving, most merciful. And verily the best speeches of Allah. Let's read that ayat again. And I free not myself from blame. Verily the human self is inclined to evil, except when my Lord bestows his mercy upon whom he wills. Verily, my Lord is our forgiving, most merciful. SubhanAllah. We don't need to give any tafsir or, or tafsil on that. It's sufficient what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in that verse. Ponder on that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also in another verse, وَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ مَا زَكَى مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ أَبَدًا that if it wasn't for the ni'mah, the, 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 the fadl, the blessings of Allah upon you and His mercy, then none of you would be purified ever. If it wasn't for the favor of Allah and His mercy, none of us would be purified. Abed. وَكَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يُعَلَّمُهُمْ Khutbah al hajjah So the Prophet used to say during the Khutbah al hajjah which we always hear, Yomu Jumu'ah, we always hear this, uh, most of the Jumu'ahs, that the Khatib says, and this was how, the, this was part of the Husna Ta'aleem, this was part of the, the beautiful teaching and preaching of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this, we should reflect upon it and how we can incorporate these manners in our life. Look at this, the beautiful statement that we hear and we don't reflect upon it. And whenever a person is given a khutbah, they should try to reflect upon that. If they really reflect upon it and reflect upon the sins that we have as a community, it's sufficient alone the sins we have as individuals. But as a community, if we reflected on all those sins, the, the khatib would probably never get past the beginning of the khutbah al hajjah When, the, in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, where the Prophet wasallam said, In alhamdulillah, نَسْتَعِينُ وَنَسْتَغْفِرُ وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شُرُورِ أَنفُسِنَا وَمِنْ سَيَّاتِ أَعْمَالِنَا That verily all the praise belongs to Allah or is for Allah. All the praise is belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The perfect, uh, complete praise 
to our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we seek his help. We seek his help. And we seek forgiveness from him. And we seek refuge in Allah from our evil selves. Again, this is going back to the evil cell, Imaratu Bisu. Wasayati Amalina and our evil deeds. Allahu Akbar. That that's what we say during the khutbah. We should reflect on that statement alone. That's just the beginning. In Alhamdulillah. Nasta'inu wa nasafru. And in other ruayat. In Alhamdulillah. Nahmadu ta'ala wa nasta'inu wa nasafru. Nasta'inu who we seek his help. We don't seek help from the dead. We don't seek help from the graves. We don't seek help from, from anyone who is not able to help us. Wa nasafru. And we seek forgiveness from Him, Subhanahu wa Taala. When na the billah, and we seek refuge in Allah from our evil selves and our evil deeds. So that is something to reflect on. That soul there, and those three types of souls. Some of the Salaf used to say, the Arifin. Wallahi, lo a'lam, enna li amalin wahidin, wasal ilallahi, lo kuntu afra bil mot, min ghaib yukadim ala ahlihi. The Salaf used to say, Wallahi, they used to swear by Allah. Some of them used to swear by Allah and say, If I knew that just one of my deeds, were accepted by Allah, then I would be more happy with death than the one who is happy to meet his family after traveling. Waqala Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma He said, Lo a'lam anna Allah qabbala minni sajdatan wahidatan لم يكون غائب أحب إليه من الموت. عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله تعالى عنه the son of Umar bin al-Khattab رضي الله تعالى عنه he said if I knew that Allah had accepted from me one sajda you know one prostration just one then being absent from travel, you know, coming back to your family, basically, would not be more beloved to me than death. Meaning that he's fearful that his deeds were not accepted, that just one sajda, if he knew that the one sajda was accepted by Allah, he would be more happy and pleased to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that, that one act of ibadah. And so we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, and may Allah accept our, our fasting, may Allah accept all of our deeds in our Ramadan, and may Allah bless us to have tawfiq, to increase our good deeds, and may Allah protect us from the evil of ourselves, and protect us all from the evil of Imaratu Bisu, and the evil of, of ourselves, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyya Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.